Okay. Okay. So like, for example, De Bono's six hats, there's the black hat, the red hat, you know, it's very clear, everyone knows their role and, and all of this. And so with this, um, with this, um, with these decks and everything, can we come up with systems in a gradual process where people then can incorporate this into the way that they plan and they set and establish uh, meetings or change the context of a meeting? And, and now, especially, you know, you have, um, we were looking at a long time ago, uh, application specific virtual meeting places. So there's a one to many, there's a many to many, you know, there are many of these different formats, but then for you, it's, uh, it's a lot more refined and nuanced and, and maybe even knowing sensitivities, triggers, all of these things that can help, you know, uh, using the meeting to create a context to help people develop greater self-awareness. For sure. I mean, right now with uh, Nova, we actually have a software program where you can program the chat room with the combo type and a value and a lens and a timer and a goal and a way to support ideas within it. And that's something which is, we're, we're this far away. And thank you for sending us those developers. We still haven't found someone. I'm just saying that that's a practical way that you can take someone step-by-step step through a process. Yeah, even for something like that, for what we're trying to do with this, you know, getting like a sand timer or an electronic timer, you know, with these cards that can make it some physical thing that bring people together, it would be great to figure out kind of uh, the, the, the systems. And so, you know, because uh, uh, I know for, uh, for Simon, we're very practical in terms of uh, it, even the, the bigger thing that you have and you know, the, 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 uh, the past and the future and, and framing, all of this is nice. Um, but, but having something very practical, even like your trust map, you know, hey, okay, now we're having, before we have a conversation, where are we? How do we feel about each other? And then to go through and, you know, maybe I feel, I, this is how I feel about you. This is how you feel about me. And we can compare. And then, and then I was even thinking of using that with my wife or something, you know, it's like, hey, the trust, you know, how do we move each of these axes forward and what can we do to gain trust and develop trust in these spaces? And, you know, a lot of these trust things you probably know is it, it takes, it can take years to build trust that can, you can lose it kind of in a moment as well too. And so, so relationship management and, and developing uh, ways of, 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 uh, of gamifying this, I think is, is really important and very useful. Agreed. I mean, one of the, I'm working on a, a course called design your ideal job, which is taking people through a sequential way of learning all the different tools. And at the end of it, you program your job that you want, and then you move into that into the future. Um, the whole idea is called the new paradigm toolkit. So there's card sets, maps, uh, game boards, processes, and software those five things. And right so now, right now we're looking at kind of card sets and game boards and everything, but I'm just trying to, you know, just for, 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 uh, for Lucas and Laurel and, and Simon right now is, can we just get like a, a basic set? What do we start with first? And then maybe show an example of how it's used and, and everything. And, and so that they can get a sense of it. So, and then, cause I think the idea after this is to, uh, to then you know talk to Lucas. I've got a couple design groups. I, I was just talking to a group in in San Francisco that that have design capability. Yesterday, Laurel and I met with uh, Larry, who's got design expertise. I've got a bunch of people that are sending me their portfolios, looking for design work and everything too. So I'd like to kind of work out a, a, an implementation plan. But I before that, I'd like to get them to get a sense of what exactly we're 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 putting together and how. And for them to understand and recognize the value of it so that we can kind of work on a plan to market it and sell it too. I would add that maybe we can find something that fits like a 15 minute, like uh, just a, a problem that you can have a 15 minute conversation on and what card set would fit that to solve that problem. So if Gino maybe can define what specific problem and you guys can define that and then and maybe Elijah can pick out so yeah i don't know what's the time frame in terms of what exercise that you want people to run but yeah we should set kind of a limit to that or else it's like a 
it would be always like a, a, a longer session than a shorter one. So let me. Um, I've got something for you here. Just give me a sec. Elijah, what you just say, the product itself has five parts, car set, the map, game board, process, and one more? What? Software. Software. And do you vision this, the target user, uh, are they like teachers, trainers? Are they individuals? I. It would depend upon, like, I mean, I would say facilitators and, and, and teachers would probably be the best, um, HR mm -hmm. departments, anyone who uses communication as their business would definitely, um, here's, here's something called the choose a remedy. Uh, and it utilizes the card sets in a, in a way, let's say we, give me a question. I mean, okay, how can we best bring the uh, card sets into the market, let's say, right? So one of the things with the card sets that I found is just having a way to answer a question, just that. Here's the question and here's a way to answer it like as a very simple, very valuable thing. So this brings up the card spread imitation synergizing language so the first card is the value which is one of the cards from the values deck imitation to value the copying of patterns of activity and thought of other groups or individuals the convo type synergizing to learn how to share the same context so that a synergy exists between all the parts kind of what uh, gina was talking about language any set or system of such symbols is used in a more or less uniform fashion by a number of people who are thus enabled to communicate intelligently with one another. So this is a, an example of a divination tool that we built online that can answer any question that is using the cards in this, in a, I call it a spell. And so imitation synergizing language, I mean, to me, imitation is the way people learn and what we're doing is we're, we're using the cards so that people can imitate whatever we're going to be doing with them, right? Synergizing is, is a way to bring everyone together to get all the parts together so that you have a, a whole energy that's greater than the parts combined. Everything about what we're talking about is about language. Um, all the card sets could be translated to every other language, I think. And then it would go like, I answer that. So now, Simon, what's your take on that? Take on. Well, just how would you answer that question using those cards? Oh, how to answer the how to bring the card to the market, but using like what value? Yeah, using these three cards to answer the question. Okay, value, how to help, what would this car help people? What, what value is that, right? What do people gain by using these cards? Would it make their, do their thing easier, more structural? Uh, synergy, synergizing, to learn how to share the same, it's like, do we using this card so that we can have the same language to speak each other, communicate? So, hello. Um, so have a easier common goal on the language. Laurel, do you want to say? Sure. Well, okay. So, if that the conversation is how can we bring the card sets to the market, which is the conversation we're having in some way, um, a 
pregnant right now. I feel that uh, would be um, you're adding on to kind of like, so I see the description, like you're adding on to the energy that's already built up. So recognizing, imitating, and then giving, uh, bouncing off uh, the same energy so that you would add on to it. That's how I feel. Um, and then, yeah, harmony lends, uh, I guess this from what lens you see things at. Definition, any set of system or symbol So that's a little bit, uh, I'm trying to understand it. Um, yeah. Um, do we use the same language? Um, is that what you mean by harmony lens? Or? Well, the, the harmony lens is again, there's four levels, the, the community, the organization, the individual outer and the individual inner. So the harmony lens is telling you that it's on the harmony wheel. So th this is, the, there's four different possible levels that can come up from this. And the, the, the reason I started to give you a bit of the background first, the big picture, is because it's a thinking system. It's an abstract thinking system that once you have it in your mind, you recognize the patterns, you start to understand how these parts fit together. But right now, I understand that I, I overwhelmed you with the amount of information that I'm giving, and it's very abstract, means something to me, but doesn't mean anything to you. <clears throat> the, the reason for the 25 years is there was a lot of time and effort put into choosing the specific words and choosing the specific pieces in the way that they are, and it takes some time to learn them. But they, you don't have to know the whole system to use parts of it. And Gino, I think like there's a there's 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 a i mean what i see with this team right now i mean the, the basic fundamental thing is just what you said get the card sets out into the market that's the basic thing so they as you said they have to be redesigned manual has to be made uh the packaging has to be made and then we need to bring it into the market right so i mean that that to me is the part, fundamental. part of part of the concern right now is just in terms of which sets and the thing is that, and, and right now, um, like they don't know any of this. And so there's a lot of knowledge that has to be had for them to even use, use something like this. And yeah. so how do we kind of simplify this? Like, like, like the simplest thing is just the conversation killers. You know, that's like a real easy thing uh, to, to, to do. Uh, in fact, the, the, the things that you had in the LaCiel thing worked fairly well. There was the conversation killers and there was the values cards, I think it was. Yeah. And then it was the values of, you know, for myself, you know, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, a group, uh, a community and, and collected, you know, so, so you, had, you had those kind of maps. And, um, and so if you had something where you could say, okay, learn this and then learn this, and then gradually use it in this way and then, and then build slowly so that they can kind of understand it more. Uh, uh, and then it enriches as they, as they, uh, they, they uh, use it and develop it or as they use it more with different people, then, um, you know, kind of that's the idea. And, you know, I know you've got this massive complex You've got this massive complex thing, you know, that's well thought out and everything, but how do you kind of onboard people in a very simple way that where they, they can make sense and understand it? Because right now, I, I don't think Simon uh, really yet knows, you know, what this is really about, per se, you know, or even the utility. It's like, how, how can we use this? You know, what what is it that uh, that uh, that that. Um, that this what what's the value that this brings even you know you 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 had the three words you know before and so uh but but even laurel and, and simon were struggling to to kind of understand how that reframes kind of the, the way i look at it for sure for sure i mean there is a learning curve and i i guess we we have to combine me teaching you guys so you get it versus the practical steps that need to happen to, well, to bring it into the world it, and related to that, 
Yeah, I, I'm also, shoot. Let me see. You gotta go? No. Uh, I'd like to, um, if you don't mind. Let's see, how do I do this? Do you want me to give you the hope? No. Um, let's see. Oh, never mind here. You don't mind. So maybe separately, I'll, I'll see if he'll join right now. I've, I've just invited Nils to join this. Nils, just to share with all of you, is big on mimetics and magic. Magic meaning the words that you use is very important to create a container and a space for engagement. He knows this stuff very, very well. So when he sees your system, he'll get really excited, I'm sure. Uh, and so he spent a lot of time studying and understanding this too. And so once he understands it, in fact, I think he just joined us. Hey, hey Nils, uh, welcome. Morning. Um, uh, just to, I'm just pulling you into this because you'll understand. I was just introducing them to you. So Nils um, is a closet mystic. <laughs> But what he does is he does magic. He's an expert in magic. And in magic, when I first met with him, we, in magic, what you do is you can create a container space for engagement. So the words that you use, the intentions that you set, and all of this are very important for creating a space for two people or a group of people to engage one another. Right, Nils? That's right. Yeah, and so Elijah here, is in Canada, he spent like 25 years developing systems for creating container spaces for people to engage. And right now I have Simon, Laurel, and, and, um, and uh, Lucas, and we're looking oh, at hey, taking Laura. Elijah's work and bringing it to market. But the issue is that Lucas, Laurel has a bit, but Simon, not, not quite. They don't have this background or this mystical background or understanding you know, words and containers and everything and how different containers can shape different conversations and qualities of conversations. But I know that you know all of this stuff. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't bring you to this earlier, um, but, um, but Elijah has these systems that I think I felt that you know, right now, Lucas and, and Simon and Laurel are trying to wrap their head around it. But I, I think you know, my intuition is that when you see this, you'll get it right away. Interesting. Okay, and so that's my hypothesis. And I, sorry, <laughs> you know, for you guys, but, but uh, Elijah, could you, you know, that's, I just pulled in Lucas, or sorry, uh, Nils Cold into this, but can you, you know, do your brief description, but understand that he, he does magic. Okay. And words and spells and everything. Okay, let me, you probably uh, take people through a process, right? You have a beginning, middle and end and you use a certain language structure to do so. And you might divide that process into pieces or parts, which could be called conversation types that you might, at the beginning, you might welcome them in. And then you might, I don't know what languaging you use to discern your process, but what I'm putting forth is like a briefing is different from a preparation, is different from directions. And that you, I've got 72 of these conversation types that are basically ways to frame what kind of conversation you're in. Like if we're in a negotiation, I just switched into an instruction. Um, there's a credibility, there's knowledge sharing, there's investigation, there's anyway, there, there's a lot of these conversation types and each of them has a purpose or a function that's very specific. So if, if we're going into a healing conversation, I'm going to be silent, you're gonna talk, I'm gonna to listen to your pain you're going to, let's say, heal. That's very different, again, if we're in a negotiation and we're going back and forth around what we want to negotiate about. So the, I have a card set, 72 cards that are the framework for that. So what Gina was bringing you in for, I think, was because you're a master of language and you're probably uh, utilizing them without that framework, but you probably have your own framework, would be my guess. Yeah, so um, I, I'm, I'm interested to hear more about what you're doing and how you're structuring this. There's always nice to have uh, more method and less madness, right? 
Um, so yeah, please show me what you're working on. So I described this before where this is the, the a map between the individual, the individual and the group, the inner and the outer, and that creates these four quadrants, the inner individual, the outer individual, the inner group, and the outer group. So okay. this, the harmony lenses, the harmony wheel organizes communities. So you have words like education, economics, health, governance, law, justice. Uh, at Synergy, you're organizing organizations. So you have like research, marketing, operations, services, stewardship, creativity. And then down at Flow, it's got to go opposite all the time. <laughs> um, at the Flow map, that organizes the individual. And you have words like resources, activities, relationships, agreements, strategies. And these three create a thinking system that has a structure that you can apply to any business. But then you can take values and actually program these words to have a custom design value system. So the card sets are each one of these four is a card set. And then there's a conversation type and then there's values and the values program intention and the, let me just bring like, this is an example of like one of the spells where you have a, a value, a convo type and a conceptual lens. Okay. So you're using like, what would be the most empowering conversation to have with Sarah Kanakin? Okay. So we have a visioning conversation. And we're focused on the intention, but we're bringing resilience in. So when I brought this into her and we had a discussion about it, it actually opened up a breakthrough for her by putting these three words together randomly. She, she experienced an aha moment with me because she, she just went through a process of going through what does this mean for me? And we had a, a quite a inspiring conversation. And so depending upon what question you ask, you get an answer. This is just an online divination tool, but what we're doing here as a team is looking at how to bring the card sets into the world. And that's something okay. that is the main, because they're, they're like a tarot deck, but it's business language. And it isn't just one deck, there's six decks. So I think Gino, like, I, I agree that we have to do it sequentially, but I think the product is actually all six decks. And then you'd have a training course that would go with it, that would take you sequentially. This is how you do that. That's how you do that. That's how you do that. If I, if I can take my um, mystic hat off and just uh, talk to you about like uh, business execution, what do you think the minimum viable product is for something like this that could be handed over to someone else and they could get value from it? It would be the card decks. You need all six before you can get value from it? No, you can, you can, they do fit together. I think the convo types on their own and the value cards on their own are standalones. I think the other four decks are more specific around building this thinking system, but it comes like it come with maps or game boards. Like the thing is there's multiple game boards, there's multiple card sets and there's multiple maps and they can all fit with one another. They can all be used with one another. And, and that's, have you guys heard of the, the, the game uh, Magic. Have you heard of the, the Magic the Gathering, a card game? Yeah. It's, it's the largest card game on the planet and millions of people are playing it every day. And the, the breakthrough that they had was you make your own deck. You don't just get a deck of cards and you play the game. You actually build decks. So there's multiple cards, multiple ways of playing. And it's, it's like a a business genius because every three months they come out with a new set of cards and they're valuable and the, you know they're collectibles and it like within this we could take we could take your whole idea Gino and make a card set about it like I, you can take knowledge a list of 50 things and make a card set about it and then it adds into your toolkit kind of thing like it's there's there's an incredible amount of uh of potential in terms of taking information and making card sets about it. Mm -hmm. 
is it possible to get a more practical demo like of how this works? Can we try it out a little bit? Okay, I'll, I'll uh, do it again. Okay, just. Okay, can you see it? I see it. Okay, so why don't you ask a question? Um, okay, uh, I would like to know, uh, what is a good type of question? Well, why don't you ask a question that's personal to you, something that you would like some guidance in that has something to do with your own life? No, but like, um, is there a particular particular type of question or like structure of a question that this will be particularly helpful for? How questions are good if you want a specific for like okay. shipping to a ball game, it really isn't. Okay, so if I um, if we try something like, how can I convince my mother? Of what? Uh, to exercise. Okay. So trust to value a person or to whom a thing in which one relies upon an interview to spend with someone and find out about who they are and what they can do and then ownership, the legal right or possession of proprietorship. So now you would start and answer that question using those three words. So I need to try to answer the question myself using these three words. Yeah. Or frame the conversation using these three words, right? Okay. Yeah. So it's a it's an interview conversation type. And then All right. the value is trust. And then the lens is ownership. So or I guess the way I would interpret it is then the, the lens is for her to own her, uh, her uh, exercise or her own health mm -hmm. conversation type is we would do it interview style and the value that you're there, you're emphasizing is, is to build trust. Is that correct? Uh, um, Elijah? Well, you're right. There's two ways you can use it to actually answer the question directly or use it to frame the how to answer the question. So to me, like an interview would be, you know, go interview your mom, um, find out what or how she could own whatever her health is, and that you have to, you know, there has to be a certain level of trust between you for that to occur. Would it make would it make sense to put the conversation type first? Then to help people structure how they understand, like you, okay, you need to have an interview through the lens of ownership building trust well it could be that way i guess if you look at the center where it has intention and attention it's kind of like the trust is you're you're setting your intention of trust within the interview process and then you're focusing your attention on the owner oh, okay okay i understand the system now right so an interview with the intention of building trust but with an attention to the ownership of the health issue. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Can we try this again? Yeah. How can we improve this product? In 
enthusiasm, to value and absorbing or controlling possession of the mind by an interest or pursuit, scheduling convo to get a synchronization between all people involved in some activity or event, and change, the ability to move from one state, form, belief, belief and or feel to another. So how would you interpret, um, how would you interpret these three cards here? Per personally, I guess it would be uh, how to improve the product. I mean, uh, I would have to be enthusiastic about scheduling with everyone of how to change the design. I mean, that's something Gino's brought up. I actually have done the design. It does need an upgrade. So the product needs to be improved in terms of its, its aesthetics of how it looks. So it has to change. And in order to do that, we have to schedule time with the designers to uh, choose a designer who's gonna look at the idea and then come up with something. So uh, in a way, and I don't mean this disparagingly, this is like a more advanced magic eight ball. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah, it could definitely work a little bit on, on the UI. But I can see, you know, mystical component aside, how uh, you can market this as something akin to a magic eight ball uh, that helps you channel your own subconscious. Like, what is the point of a magic eight ball, really? Because it's useful for people, even who think the magic eight ball is not magical. I like there are tons of people that don't think the magic eight ball is magical, but they still love using it. Right. And they love using it because it aids them in decision making, because when the magic eight ball tells them something they don't like, they understand. I didn't like that answer. Right. Mm. Uh, that it's like this old trick, you know, if you don't know what to do, flip a coin about it and you'll know, not because the coin told you, but when you see the result, you'll know. Wait, time out for a second. Also, uh, um, Elijah, can you show him the uh, your five values map thing as well too? Okay. Communication space values map. Okay. So that's just one application of many applications of these card sets and everything. And so mm -hmm. another thing that he has too to help you understand your own yourself and your, your values and everything when you engage other people, and this is really quite interesting, is um, this other map that he's bringing up. So once you have, uh, you use value cards on this one, right? Yeah, it take, I've got a lot of images on my, in, in this place, so it just takes a while. So just keep uh -huh. talking in a minute or so. And so, so there are all of these game maps that he has. And part of Elijah, two, two more things about Nils. If you look to his right, um, he's actually a board gamer as well too. He plays Warhammer. And the other thing is he does augmented reality. And so some of the things that we were thinking of doing, he's got another set of, I think, 22 cards of conversation killers of things where people, you know, and then if you're in a group dynamic and someone talks too much or something like that, people can then hold the card up to make them aware of the type of conversation killing that they're doing. And some of the things that we're looking at too is, is to do like augmented reality too. So you can put the card up and then you can see examples of, of what, uh, what each of the cards means. And so this is a, a, a way of doing training as well too. Mm. Um, and what, what, do you, what are you looking for specifically, Elijah? Like, um, sorry, since I'm late in this call, like what is this call about? What, so what is the... He's got these systems and then we're looking to, to uh, I've got um, Lucas looking to oversee, and I, I've got Simon looking to bring in our mass program, and then Laurel also to help oversee and then bring it to market. But we're looking at creating, redesigning this to make it more professional and everything, um, and then doing a Kickstarter and then um, and then bringing these to market. I and think the the, the next the generation Magic Eight Ball uh, mm -hmm. thing. Uh, you could make a pretty compelling app there. Well, take a look, take a look, not only app, but take a look at what he's got behind him right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see so, that. Of all the maps over all the years, this one was the kind of like keeps coming through in terms of the big one for communication boundaries and that the personal space, just you, one-on-one, -on -one, it's just you and somebody else, the group space is what we're in. And then the larger community space when you have other people and that, our patterns are different in each of these. And then the sacred space in the middle, which is kind of like, you know, for all worldviews to come together. 
but you can take a value. Like I have wisdom at personal space, love at one-on-one space, humor at group space, justice at community space and surrender at sacred space. So one of the biggest things I found was there's ways to program values onto single words to create value systems where the, the relationship between the values is very specific. I mean, a lot of businesses, right? You have honesty, accountability, responsibility, whatever the values are, they put on a wall, but it doesn't directly tie into the uh, operating system. But with this, there's a, there's a very unique way of programming values into every part of what we're doing. And so one of the card sets are those values. So okay. would I understand that if you have the map behind you, as well as a card set of the value, that's a good enough exercise to start with? Just, I mean, that's what we did at LOCL. I mean, they had the card set, you, 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 the intention, it takes 10, 15 minutes. I mean, even we could do it right now. You could write down five values. You don't even need the card set. Um, you write down five values, you turn them over and you place them on there. And there you have your first value system. So this could be an app. I mean, this, this would be a great app for, um, for doing too. So then would you be, ex um, would you be excited about having that as the first deliverable uh, of the map behind you as well as the values card set as the first one, first one that we focus on um, to just get the teams rolling with branding and design? I mean, it could, I think, I think what Gino said with the condo killers, I mean, I think, again, like of all the things I presented to LaCiel, the condo killers and this map were the two things they chose um, and the trust map. So those three things is what they chose. And I mean, they're all very good. Um, so, I mean, we could just follow their example and uh, come up with the beginning of a program where those are the first three things. Yeah. And then once again, like the condo killers are a good start. And then once you've got that set up for your funnel, then you can just bring in the other card sets piece by piece. And then people are buying a card deck to build up their new paradigm toolkit. So uh, is, the, is the intention here to like roll out one or several products commercially? Yes. Yes. And what, how far along are you in commercializing any of this? Do you have a team now? Have you raised some funds? Like, This is the team. I've, I've been doing basically research for about 25 years. So I've, I'm like uh -huh. the lone inventor in a cave who's, who's who Gino just kind of put a flashlight cool. and said he's got something in here. So I most of the stuff is it's incomplete. It's not at that next level of professionalism. Um, and this is the first meeting brought together by Gino to bring some people together to see if people <coughs> want to participate in, in on the team. So what I see with this, um, the five communication space values map and the earlier one where you said, you know, it gives you three cards is essentially both of these, if I have to describe what they have in common is that they are helpful introspection tools that use like random word association to help you structure your thinking. Right. Like, again, if we just, if I fully take the, the mystic hat off for a little bit, mm -hmm. right. Um, the, the tool where you ask a question, right. If you structure the, if you've built the dictionary of words, just right, you get a pretty good, almost like cold reading app, right. Where any combination will feel somewhat meaningful. And that's not a bad thing, right? If any combination feels somewhat meaningful, what you've done is you've helped someone realize something. Like a lot of what really good, bad astrologers do, or like, like say like, un, like not very uh, honest astrologers, what they'll do, right? Is they'll tell something that will be true for almost everybody. And that has value too. Because a lot of the time you go to an astrologer or something like this because you're trying to help structure your own thoughts and you're, or you're looking to get a confirmation of a bias you have already and you want someone to tell you that you're right in your belief. And for anyone that has any one of these desires, an, an app that allows you to ask a question and then it gives you a suggested approach 
to how to tackle that problem. Like it doesn't answer the, the question, right? But it gives you an approach, right? So with my mother, it gave me the approach that, you know, maybe you should interview her with the intent of building trust and your conversation should be structured on ownership. Like, okay, I get that, right? And how can we improve this product? Well, you know, we need to sit down, we need to uh, schedule, we need to organize uh, with the intent of building up enough enthusiasm to see this over the finish line you know, with the uh, focus on what do we need to change to get this to market, right? So like this question asking tool becomes, uh, if you do it right, like almost in, through the generality of its answers becomes a very helpful tool, just like with the Magic 8 Ball, right? So what I envision you, you could do as a minimum viable product is to have a very simple app where you type out a question, and then you get the response, uh, not UI-wise, you know, left to right, but top to bottom. You know, you should interview, blah, blah, like one, two, three. And then it gives you the opportunity to hit randomize on any one of these three cards if you don't resonate with them, mm. right? Like, I don't think interview is the right thing. So you hit randomize, you get a new one. And then what you do with that uh, is you will also ask uh, in the user interface, was this helpful to you? Yes or no. And you start collecting the data on this, right? So you have an app out that it's a magic app. It's essentially what it does. But you start collecting uh, which kinds of things people find interesting, right? Like, yes, this was helpful. What kind of questions people ask? And if you get enough traction, right? All of a sudden you have a pretty interesting data set that you can do things with. Like for example, you will know things like, well, when people ask questions about family, they don't like when the word resilience pops up or whatever, right? Uh, and I think that could be very interesting and could become a very good marketing and PR platform for you to spread awareness of what you're doing, right? Because then what you've had is you have, ha you've had an app that helps you structure your thinking by almost throwing out a, uh, like it could be random. I don't know how your, your system works, but it even could be random, right? Uh, a random combination of words that helps you structure your thinking and then interrogates you, how do you feel about this, right? If I told you, you have to interview your mom with trust and ownership, right? How do you feel about that? Um, I think that could be a pretty meaningful app. And I think uh, as well, with a very similar mechanic, your five spaces, if we could bring that back on the screen. Um. Uh, with the five spaces, uh, if we can reuse the, the dictionary of words that's being used in the other app, right, to either randomly place here and ask how do you feel about that and then ask them to replace them or just tell them like please place your cards into this to create a kind of personality map and allow people to share this on social media blah 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 again you could start building up a pretty meaningful data set so i think there are two very simple apps that you could have built for like a very small amount of money honestly uh, the magic eight ball app and, and in a sense, a different Magic 8-Ball app where instead of three slots, you know, like here's how you'll do it with what intent and with one, what attention, right? Here are the different spaces, right? So if we're, being, uh, if we're being pragmatic, right? These are two different interfaces for taking three or five words and putting them in labeled boxes. And what it does is it helps the end user think about the question that they brought in, right? It's helpful to them. Uh, it becomes uh, it becomes someone you can talk to, essentially, when you need to talk to yourself. Um, so I think you could start with either one of those apps, um, not oversell about what's in the whole system and how all of it comes together, because you always need to have a minimum viable product. 
right? Just something small that people can engage with and like, get interested so that you can tell them more. It's never a good idea to tell people everything from the get-go uh, because they get too much that they might be excited about and they get the paradox of choice and might not be able to execute on anything. Yeah. So, uh, Hey, show them the trust map too. I have to blow this up bigger. How do I do that? Maybe speaker view, and if I keep talking. Um... Uh, yeah, okay, speaker view, right, there we go. So there are a couple axes here. So, you know, and, and so the idea here is in the center, you're in the full trust zone uh, where it's high integrity, lifetime relationship, there's action-oriented, shared beliefs, high competence, mutual respect, uh, comfort, and shared context. And then each of these axes, you know, depending on how you feel about someone, you can kind of uh, place where you are with them and you get a sense of where you're at with somebody. And then with something like this, if you're open with it, then, you know, what can I do to like improve my uh, integrity? You know, maybe I did something wrong or something is, is there something I can do to kind of improve the way I interrelate with you hmm. and what I represent to you in, in our engagement. And so this is kind of a, like a, like a gamified, another gamified way of, uh, of looking at where, how do you feel about someone in terms of working together with someone? So you can even imagine in our master's projects, uh, Simon, where, People could create, look at their teammates and look at where, where do you fall, you know, in, 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 in terms of uh, 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 with, with, the, uh, with my teammates, you know, how do I feel about them, you know, across these different axes to get an assessment of whether I want to work with them or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. And th this is actually like, if you look at one of the um, values is trust. And this is a breakdown of it. I could pretty much do one of these for every value too. Like there's a, <laughs> there's an insane amount of other work that's created by this, but there's, there's like an unending amount of maps and card sets that can be created. So once we get it going, um, it's, th there's a, yeah, but I'm, I mean, the, the issue is never creating content. The issue is getting the content to be consumed. Ah. Uh, right. Um, it's it, it's it's great that you have an endless supply of of work ahead of you, uh, but what we have to to solve first is you know make sure you have the resources so that you can do that work and still eat, right? Yeah. Um, so I I think um, if you want to commercial yeah MVP if you want to commercialize this if you want this to like more thing, be, be well, your profession. One more and, thing, Elijah. Show him the conversation killers. He doesn't know, it, although I just did one okay. <laughs> by interrupting him. <laughs> but um, Nils, take a look at this too. So he's got mm. these, um, and this is great for the Zoom age as well too. And then this ideally could be something that you set up as a conversation and then people could submit it into a channel so that the speaker knows in an anonymous kind of way. It would be great if it was anonymous. Yeah, if, if someone could flash a conversation killer card in a group setting and you don't know who did it, but like, okay, there's a lot of that going on right now. Yeah. So here, here's, he's got like 22 of these. 30 of them right now. 30. So, oh, can you duck your head? Are you flashing through them or? Yeah, I'm just, it's just, it's a slow. Uh... I don't know if Zoom allows you to have like bots, what kind of integrations it allows. Well, but if you want it, if you wanted these to be anonymous in a Zoom setting, like essentially what you would want is you would want 
uh, a participant in the Zoom call that's not a human, uh, but that can still display information into the call. And then people can submit one of these uh, cards or choose one of these cards uh, for that virtual participant to display. So like in this call, you know, we would, we would have you, Gino, Laurel, Simon, myself, uh, Yang Yang, everyone's here. And there would be another one, right? Which is like the conversation mate, whatever, which is a product. So the conversation mate is in, is in the call. And uh, because I'm hijacking the conversation and not listening to what you were supposed to present, Gino could choose a card for that, right? So that I could see like, oh yeah, that is going on right now. But I wouldn't know who did that. Um, and so Gino could feel safe in submitting that card without hurting my feelings. Is that okay. kind of what you had in mind, Gino? Yeah, so two things. One is right now, the way he has it, if you have a safe space and we all know that we're here to support each other and all of it is kind of subconscious things that you know people could have a deck of cards and they would just hold it up when they felt it happening. And so, so this is a way to, to, to raise awareness, to make the person aware. You know, that's one thing. And then the other is because he's got these 30 cards, at, at least for me, uh, and with a group of people and in teaching conversations and how to hold space and everything like this, uh, it, 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 it's a great taxonomy of, 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 uh, of things not to do, I guess, you know, or things to be mindful of when they're happening in a conversation. Mm. Can I reset the room a little bit? Sorry. So uh, we came into this conversation initially thinking that we're uh, for me, at least, I was thinking that it was card sets. And so the format is changing about what, how the product is de being delivered and what is interesting, right? Is that kind of well, where we're at? And I, I think, you know, Nils came in, but I, I think we're still talking card sets. Okay. And potential apps as a follow on. Card sets are easy because it's just a redesign, you know, getting the instructional materials, showing people how it can be used how it can be effective, like Nils was talking about in terms of at least the MVP to get people interested and then to do like a Kickstarter campaign around it. Yeah, and, so uh, I, I wanna ask one background story about just like uh, teams you worked with before um, in, in sharing these card sets or um, app teams that you might have, dev teams that you might have worked with. Um, what has worked well and what hasn't worked well so we understand your working style would be helpful for me to like yeah gauge how yeah what kind of team you need and yeah how do we need to be interacting with you um well lots of different types of testing i've been testing a lot um people love the value cards, they love the conversation types. I think the info matrix in general is a little too much for most people. And it's only really in the software side of things that things will sort of work out. I, I think it's like right now, Luciel's using pieces and parts. Like it's just, I've been more of a researcher who is focused on sort of finishing the products together rather than going out and doing tons of testing with the groups. I did a lot of divination testing that always worked really well but i haven't worked with tons of organizations with it to, to be honest i've been more of a reclusive kind of researcher i like the like i know when i know something works i'm fine and then i go on to the next thing and i the, like if you see it there's <laughs> there's an incredible amount of different pieces and parts and that's what excites me i like designing and creating so uh, that's why i haven't sort of brought it into the market because i know my life has to change completely in order to be a little more of an entrepreneur right yeah, I think I want to get back to Neil's point, right? You have tons of information, which is great, a lot of potential, but then we start need to start from small, right? Also from user point of view, you dump so much on them, just like this meeting, I'm kind of lost. I don't know where to start. And so maybe pick a piece, any piece, right? You want to, you think based on whatever criteria you fit, you see fit, you pick a small piece, and then we try to find the target user and then try to do a show and tell and then see how that person or group of person respond. So if, if, we're, from there, the if we're looking at cards, right, and we're taking the, 
the first thing you you showed me, Elijah, like a simple way to turn that into to cards, I feel, is to give people three decks of cards, essentially, in one product. You know, they, they buy the set of three, three colored cards. There are like your action card. I forgot which words you use, so you, you'll just have to translate from what I'm saying, right? Uh, the action cards, the intention cards, and the focus cards, right? Where the action is, what are you supposed to be doing? Like an interview. The intention is, okay, what am I, how am I supposed to be conducting myself doing this? Well, to build trust, right? But what is the focus? What is the outcome I want from this? It's ownership, right? But what is the action? The action is scheduling. What is the intention to bring about enthusiasm, enough enthusiasm so that our focus can be on change, right? So- Can we do do like one of those calendar, like with the swivels, and then you have three card sets and then you flip it so you can change the card sets. So maybe you have 20 on this, 30 on this, and 30 on this. And then it will have different colors, but it'll still be one product. Then it'll be, yeah, it, it'll be easier to carry around. I don't know if that can be possible. Or like a format where three card sets can be one. And uh, yeah. I think you don't need to over-engineer this. You could put this at Kickstarter with just the, the three colored cards. And maybe you want to add a little gimmick like there's like a, like an attention crystal or something that you get along as well that you speak your your question into, you put that down on the table and then you put your three cards. But that's really just to channel the energy of the end user towards the process, right? Like it's full on, just a gimmick to help them focus on sitting down sincerely with the cards, right? And then we do a Kickstarter for this. Um, so, you know, we just have to produce one set, you know, that saves you money, right? And you make an instructional video, uh, like here's how it works. You ask a question and you put down one of these cards, one of these cards, one of these cards. And now this has suggested to you a way that you should approach this problem, right? That, that in itself is a pretty fun game actually. And you can use it in a in a 1v1 setting as well. Like, you know, Gino comes to me with a pr- problem. It's like, you know what? Why don't we ask the cards about this, right? Gino, state your question again. He states his question again. We've done an action card, an intention card, a focus card. Do you resonate with this? Like it becomes a, a powerful conversation thing. It becomes a powerful introspection thing. And I think it, it could be uh, successful on Kickstarter. And are you familiar with Kickstarter, Elijah? A little bit. I haven't put anything on there, but I, I'm aware of it, yes. So the, the, the core mechanic of Kickstarter, right, is that they hold the money for you in escrow, uh, right? So that let's say, for example, you wanted to raise $10,000 to produce a bunch of these cards, right? But you don't want to take that financial risk. What Kickstarter allows you to do is reach out to a market and see, can I sell 10,000 of these? And if you can, you get the money from Kickstarter, right? If you can't, Kickstarter gives the money back, right? You, you're familiar with how it works? Yeah. So the, the great thing with that is for physical products uh, and like tabletop products, card games and stuff, a lot of people don't know this, but 69% of all the money that Kickstarter has raised for gaming has gone to tabletop gaming, 69% of all the money. And I think the reason for that is uh, tabletop games are, especially if you're not a software engineer, kind of easier to create. Um, easier to create a prototype, easier to bring bring to the Kickstarter platform, right? Because we could definitely just produce, you know, one or 10 sets of these cards without a huge financial investment and make a little instructional video, show how it works, put it up on Kickstarter, promote it, and see if there's a market demand for this product. And you would have minimized your own financial risk or the need to find an investor. Yeah. So maybe an MVP is really just a card deck with three colored cards, because I imagine the cards are not fully interchangeable. I think it's better, in fact, if they're not fully interchangeable, you know, so there's one type of card, another type of card and a third type of card. Um, and yeah, that, that becomes a, 
uh, a pretty meaningful exchange that you can do. It again, it becomes like a magic eight ball, but in in card format. Uh, it's it's a little bit like tarot cards, but in a way that everyone can interpret their own answer. That's what I like with this, right? Like if Gino puts down three tarot cards in front of me, I don't know what to make of that, right? And that's how the tarot readers make their money. They're good at telling a story that connects the cards together. But with your system here, it's a lot, it's a lot easier to find the story of what this means, right? It's like a self-serve tarot reading. You can understand it yourself. You don't need a bunch of training, actually. It's very intuitive. Yeah, and then with all these different maps, they're multiple. They're multi-usable, as well too. You know, so there's the five values, and then he's got all these other things where the same cards. And once you know the meaning of them, like a tarot deck, you know, that you can actually apply it to kind of design an organization and everything too. The values of an organization, or even yeah. the culture of a company. I think we could add those as add-ons in the Kickstarter. So a uh, Kickstarter allows you to have. Or, or we do them as uh, separate Kickstarters. But what, what I see here, could you put up the, the five spaces again? Okay. So let's say that we had printed, you know, 30 different action cards, 30 different intention cards, 30 different focus cards. Again, I, I, sorry, I forgot what you called them uh, initially. Values, Those, conversation types, and lenses. Cool, right? They're like 30 of each. And... Those are the cards, right? And that, then let's say we just had like a little mat printout that looks like this, right? This, if I took uh, the conversation type cards, uh, the ones that I called action cards, right? And I place only those kinds of cards into this map, right? It's like, okay, what kind of conversations do I want with myself? What kind of conversations do I want one-on-one? -on -one? What kind of conversations do I want in group? And same thing with like intention, focus, uh, or the attention, intention things, right? Um, with the same deck of cards, you can play a second game, right? So if the first game is just like put down one of each and ask a question or ask a question and put down one of each, that's one game, right? That's the magic eight ball game. But then with just one add-on, like this printout math that you put on the table, whatever, gives you a for, another format to put down the cards um, to, again, as an introspection tool, right? So if you already own, you know, Elijah's Magical Card Deck, then you can also buy uh, Elijah's Magical Map, right? And they go together and it makes it a lot easier to sell the map as well because it just goes with the cards. Where are you with it, Elijah? Like, you mean with what we're talking about right now? Yeah, with what Neil just presented. Yeah. I'm fine with that. I mean, I'm I'm just listening, right? I mean, I there's a lot of different ways to do this, and at some point we got to sort of choose one way to do it. I I don't think it's going to necessarily happen in this. We're just getting to know each other, doing a bit of a brainstorm, right? Um, you know, I I do have in my background quite a few specific things of either what I thought could happen or how I, it could happen. But, you know, I, I understand from an inventor's point of view that I'm so I'm too into it. And my assessment isn't probably uh, that good in terms of what the market really wants and what the market, the best entry into the market. So I, 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 I I'm not trying to invalidate your market ideas or your grand vision for how to do things. I'm just trying to think of like, what is an, a minimum viable thing that we can put out something so we don't have to build Elijah's whole magical world before Elijah gets to commercialize this. But like, here's a thing that builds towards your grander vision, right? Yeah, yeah. no, I, I agree. I, I agree with, uh, you need some place to start and it needs to be small and simple. Yeah. How about, um, since we're almost close to two hours in, um, how about maybe the next meeting can be just uh, the designers coming up with uh, coming up with some ideas, um, and then you can give feedback, and maybe they're just very simple card ideas, because um, then we can have interactions of 
about designs as well and branding to start with. And uh, we can just pick one of them, the first, yeah, uh, the map first, uh, the plus map and the values map first, because that needs to be there anyways. So maybe we can start with something as the most basic part to start. Um, yeah, would that run along with your idea, Nils, like of what you see? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just being conscious of time. Two things, one is, hey, Nils, would you like to be involved in advising or helping out with this? You know, number one, I just trying to drag you in. If it's a small project like doing a Kickstarter for an MVP, I'm happy to help. Okay, if great. it's something a lot bigger where we're rolling out, uh, you know, Elijah's whole world of products, uh, I think that's going to be hard to get off the ground if we're not focused on doing like, just do a small thing first. Yeah. Uh, Elijah, do you have these, um, these cards in like Excel format? Uh, not Excel. I have them in PDFs of the actual cards. Um, I could put them in an Excel uh, format. It, uh, yeah, I think that would be helpful actually. If you could put them in in, uh, in an Excel format, like the, I have these many cards of this type, these many cards of this type, these many cards of that type. Uh, don't worry about like any design or anything like this, just like the pure content of it. Uh, I, yeah, I can help you do a little bit of cost calculation on, you know, what would it cost to like make a deck of these cards? Uh, are these enough to play a simple game, like ask a question and put out the cards? Um, but yeah, honestly, I, I think like a Kickstarter, even a small Kickstarter for something like $5,000 uh, to make just, just a deck of cards could be a, a fun project, right? And then if people are really resonating with it, you might raise a lot more than $5,000. But... Uh, that's the idea. I also have manufacturers lined up that make these kind of things here in Hong Kong and everything too. So, it, <clears throat> and I know part of what I was hoping to is that Elijah could kind of list out all of his stuff and <clears throat> Nils, he's his master thing where he looks at, you know, centuries and then years and then months, he's got a whole time thing. And, you know, if you guys would have a fascinating conversation, just understanding his matrix and everything. Mm -hmm. And all of this relates to organizational culture. I'm thinking if we can then gamify these things of communication and, and everything into like organizations, into corporates and everything, uh, that's like, uh, that's like huge. And so if companies can realize that this can benefit in them and in, in communicating and in relating and in, in designing experiences that create conversations um, to get conversations going, connecting people i mean that that would be that would be huge you know that's kind of the the uh the idea and so this even this values thing where it's the individual one-to-one -one, kind of the group and then the community you can kind of think of the company my work group you know the people that i deal with and everything a, a lot of this lends itself very well to uh to uh to organizations I guess, so we're coming near the end of time. Um, so I've got some takeaways, I think, in my own mind of what I, I need to do. Do we wanna set up, let's say a weekly call uh, for the people that are interested to continue? Or even initially, depending on you, cause I'd love to get this. Um, we've got Lucas at least for the summer. And so I'd like to get something, you know, if we can get something out done by by um by kind of august september time frame you know and then if we can get something actually usable you know we can actually uh actually we're okay with time uh, simon's class is in the uh in the in the spring semester so we have till like january or so you know for that to to try to use something that kind of in the in in teaching and everything but even onboarding our students the conversation killers is a real easy thing you know, just to make them more aware, especially these mainland students where they don't have sisters and brothers. Um, and I guess like hit the next Christmas uh, probably would be like a, uh, a good way to launch it in terms of it for the bigger numbers as a Christmas present, maybe. I think if we're doing the single deck of cards, we can have it out for this Christmas. Yeah, easily. Or even, fuck, even Thanksgiving.
Yeah, ahead of time. Right, like here's a fun right. Thanksgiving game to play with your family. Yeah. Um, so what do you think about the idea of just weekly meetings for the people who are participating and then use that as the methodology to move it along? I, I think a better method is to set a, a piece of homework for every meeting and then call a meeting when the homework is done. Okay. Because uh, otherwise, in my experience, weekly meetings end up with a lot of people just saying, hi, how have you been? And things haven't necessarily moved forward. Okay. So at the end of every meeting, everyone involved gets a piece of uh, homework. When the first person is done, they get the opportunity to call a follow-up. Okay. I, like, I would think one of the biggest things is looking at the redesign, right, of the card sets. Um, just to kind of get the aesthetic down. Yeah. I think there, we could do that, that very, but very think... cheaply if you first put your cards into an Excel format, right? Uh, so that it's uh, easy for a designer to work with. Uh, you could get a designer off of Fiverr or one of these websites to design three different card designs and then another, like an, a software engineer at Fiverr to uh, make just help you very cheaply uh, make it so that you could, uh, you know, map the words of a card to the design of a card. Like, I, I think we could produce this product looking very nice for not a lot of money at all. And, uh, and then, then do a Kickstarter. Just uh, like, I, I, I think this deck of cards with three different colors, that's a product all like it, it works on its own. It does a thing. It, uh, and if you could send it over as Excel, what I would do actually is I would print some just on blank paper to start, right? Uh, like just three stacks of paper. Here are the, here's this stack, here's this stack, here's this stack. And just play it with people for a while, see what comes up, right? Beta test it before we even put the design on it. Just like play with people, uh, play with a bunch of people, see how they feel about it. What's, and, what's your email, Nils? Uh, Nils, N-I-L-S. I'll add them to the group. Okay. At what? At Aukilabs, Labs. That's A U K I. Adam Umbrella Kilo Indigo Labs.com. Aukilabs.com. Labs.com. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, just send me when, when you have them in Excel format. But let me understand Excel format. You mean just take the basic language, put it in Excel? Yeah. Just like, here's the column of these kinds of cards. Here's the column of these kinds of cards. Here's the column of these kinds of cards. And the actual cards themselves. Uh, I don't need any kind of design, just the words no, no, sorted no. by category. Just the yeah. words, like here's the word and here's the description kind of thing. And yeah. Then deck. Yeah. Sorted he's by category. Those, he's got those round circle things in PDF already. Yeah. Like is, is it, if we sent you the deck, like we already have it in deck form. Do you want it? Would that be better, or you want it in Excel? You just have uh, to print it out. Like it's yeah. Always, I, I, like I, I want to be printing them out, and I want to print them out as cheaply as possible. Meaning, I'm just looking for the words. Uh, I think it would be helpful for you to put them in Excel because that's the start of making like any kind of software. Anyhow, like it needs to be in a simple database format, and Excel is the simplest database format. Okay. So, moving this over to Excel is already a step towards increasing the technical competence of your stack, right? Okay. Um, because then the cards are in a database. Okay, I mean, we do have it in a database in the that Remedy Oracle thing that you saw, because um, we do have that, all the cards are part of that program. But okay. But anyway, I'll, I'll do that. So this was the Choose a Remedy site. Yeah, Choose yeah. a Remedy. Is, for everyone, do you want to write that down? Choosearemedy.com is the website that has the 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 oracle. Choosearemedy.com. And then you could play around with it a bit just to kind of see how it works. Um, I also, you know, it's, so are we, we're coming to the end. Uh, do we want to take takeaways for the next meeting, or is it? Are we at that stage yet? Uh, I I would suggest uh, you give me access to the database uh, for these questions, or uh, put them in Excel. 
when I tried to choose a remedy, I only got, oh no, here they come. It was thinking doesn't for a while. The, doesn't work on the phone. I don't know, I'm on the, on the computer. So uh, I just asked, how can I help with this product? And it told me the convo type is a team follow-up <laughs> and that the value lens is uh, joy and that the lens is budget. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, like I, I think uh, I, I, I don't like are these uh, are these randomly generated or do you have some kind of more clever algorithm for for how they are? Uh, no, they're, uh, random, they're randomly generated, but they're specific. All the card set, sets are in there. So there's mm -hmm. 100, 100 different values, 72 combo types and then another 200 cards for that third one. OK, uh, I do think that. Uh, I don't know that value combo type and lens are necessarily the best words to describe it. Uh, but I like what you've done. Like, I think this is a, this is a fun product to play with. You, you know, compared to like Brian Eno's oblique strategies, you know, and, and some of these other things. And for reference in the group, I sent the angel cards just to show you a style of design and, and, you know, communicating ideas and everything. Uh, and th that comes from the, the transformation game. Mm. And so I think um, we've got, uh, you know, uh, just in terms of takeaways, uh, I'm hoping to get Lucas to really drive this, you know, and, and come up with a plan and, and everything and, and look at the China uh, to do this in Chinese as well, too. So maybe even translating the words into Chinese and everything. Train these people in terms of getting them to know the conversation types, the words and everything, either with a guidebook or a short animation or something like this. You know, I'm thinking these kind of things. And the nice thing with cards is that uh, with augmented reality, we can actually, the card can also be the training book. So rather than flipping through a book, you can have an app and, you know, just put your phone on the card and it can kind of explain to you, you know, what, 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 what the card is about uh, and everything. You could even, uh, and so, 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 so there's, there's uh, that kind of stuff that can be thought about, you know, just throwing some ideas for Lucas um, and then, um, and then to get a group on, on the utilization, you know, it would be great. Uh, you know, I, I just know the cards that you, and the things that you did within La Ciel, but Elijah, if you could think through, you know, with this base thing, what are the different maps that you can have? And what are the other types of things that you could do with this core, you know, base deck? And then from this, where would, what would the next stage be and everything? And to really work out that kind of roadmap and, um, and figure out and the challenge that you had, Elijah, too, is, you know, you've got so much of it, but communicating it. And, you know, when you've got someone like Nils that can see it right away, he can get it. <laughs> He understands this because I, I knew his background in magic and everything um, and, and words and how words are important to create containers for communication and everything. So, you know, I knew that when he saw it, he could get it right away. But lay people like Simon and Laurel and, and even Lucas, they're still, huh? What does this mean? How, how do we use this? What's the function of this? You know, what's the value of this even? It, it's, it's just overwhelmingly complicated. And so figuring out how best to present all of these basic things and, and the utilization and everything is something that we should think about too, especially if we're going to turn it into a short, you know, three to five minute Kickstarter campaign video. For sure. And I think, you know, one of the ideas was having the remedy site be the, like a, a, an online divination that's free for everyone. And then you have this button click, you know, buy the card set kind of thing. So that would be an attractor that then you could, sell the card sets through in the training programs well i think uh, the, the, having the training programs and everything because once you understand this and and it provides a common vernacular for a group of people uh, uh especially if you're mindful of an organization culture and and how different people uh engage differently and and you know characteristics and stuff um you know i i see tools like this then things like enneagram and i know you gene keys and all this other stuff uh, those gene keys and everything aren't making it into the corporate, but I know that Enneagram and, you know, Myers-Briggs and everything are already. And so then having like a whole box of, of things that companies can then use to help enhance 
uh, communications and and uh, an organizational culture, I think, is uh, is important. And then this could be a valuable piece for that. For sure. Lucas, how are you feeling? Yeah, actually, uh, I have a question. Do, do you have some plan for this? Like first step, what do we need to do? And the second step, what do we need to do? I mean, um, some exactly things to uh, to produce this or to make this thing a progress. What I think well, one of the the most, like I think uh, Nail, Nail said, with in terms of getting a design that we can agree upon as being like the main design of it. Cause I know I'm sort of attached with how it is, but it, it needs to get an upgrade. So that's probably a, a big. And so, so with that, Lucas, just maybe perhaps um, if we had a group, if you could sit in, but, but maybe even, you know, the next call being something like either, you know, Laurel, Nils, uh, Elijah, and maybe me um, to really go through you know, what this MVP thing and, and to understand it and, and, and to play it more as well too. And then I think what Nils would like to do is just understand it more. And then, and then, and then, you know, just even this simple divination thing, uh, uh, just try it out and, and, and just, just kind of play it. Um, but, um, but I, I know that these are just pieces of a vast bigger thing as well too. But it's just really looking at staging it and given the MVP and, and selling the potential of this is something that could be used within your whole organization and everything and, and make, you know, communication and all this other stuff more effective. Um, I think, uh, I think, you know, just that kind of understanding uh, the, the base set and then what mats and everything and the conversation killer cards and, you know, these kind of things, figuring out what that set is. Once we have that set and an understanding, um, then then you know coming up with the next steps of production and design and everything. Okay, you still have the Bristol coupon. Oh, okay. You have it, right? I know. I gave it to uh, Jilly. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, but I I think you know just getting another one group meeting for the the domain experts to really understand it more uh and 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 uh really appreciate you know what, what's there uh to get to the mvp and then from that the marketing strategy and and uh, at least how we're gonna present it and then how we're gonna produce it and redesign it i think uh those are the, and then from that we can kind of come up with a production timeline i don't know putting that yeah, okay, I got it. is there more material on this that i can be sharing with uh with trainer types and consultant types to get feedback um i can send you stuff yeah um uh, do you want to send me your email in the app or yeah i'll send it on whatsapp yeah yeah there's a whatsapp group now and then i guess this is all kind of confidential too so but for testing reasons is it okay to share or is that not okay to share? yeah i mean if you just tell them that it's you know it's a prototype that hasn't come into the market and that they, they shouldn't send it on to anyone else you know just basic trust just basic uh trust you know or send them to people you, you trust So thank you for everyone for coming. And uh, I'm very appreciative for, of everyone spending time here. And thank you very much, Regino, for organizing this. And I've, I've waited a long time for this. And I, I hope I didn't overwhelm you too much. And uh, uh, thanks, Niels, for coming in at short notice. And uh, your, your input was very appreciated. If you can uh, send me the cards in Excel format, just the words. Uh, then yeah, I can help you make a simple prototype. And I, I think yeah, the a sensible, not the only approach, right? But a sensible MVP approach is just a deck of cards and a Kickstarter. Right. Uh, that'll allow you to build a mailing list, blah blah blah, that you can sell each extra step to. 
and, and build, you know, Elijah's whole magic emporium. But uh, yeah, I suggest you to just start with the action cards. Very simple. If you send it as Excel, I'll genuinely actually play with it. I print it out and, and use it because what's missing from the, the website right now, right, is that I can't randomize a card. I, I wrote that down in the, the thing. But with actual physical cards, that's very easy. You know, so if you and I are sitting across from each other at the table and you have asked me, you know, like, well, how, how can we market this on Kickstarter? You know, and I can put down these three cards. And if we feel like one of these just don't make sense, we need to make it easy to replace one, right? Because ultimately, we're not playing the game to do Simon Says and do exactly what the cards say. We're playing the game to help us distill our thoughts and find some, like we're looking for the answer we want, right? Yeah. That's what we're doing. We're looking for the answer we want. Yeah. So you need to make it easier on the website as well to get the answer you want by replacing one of the cards. Right. We, we did have that in another format where we we're programming chat rooms. Mm. Um, but I understand what you mean. If you don't like a card, click a button, get another card. Yep. Yep. All right. Thank you, guys. Hey. Okay. So uh, we shall be in touch. And uh, huge thanks and gratitude for everyone for being here for your time. And I look forward to uh, our next steps. All right. Thanks. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Nope. Why? I don't know. It's my birthday.